Hi everyone, I want to try and offer a solution to you for a problem which seems to have reoccurred through the various production exercises which we've done so far. I've been quite insistent and I'm becoming more insistent that you use original music. I have very clear reasons for this. Firstly that criterion C by which you're assessed creativity and originality, um, you can hardly claim um, great creativity or originality if you're merely recycling somebody else's creative endeavour. So um, it's very, very easy to criticise without offering a solution. So what I want to try and do today is to offer you something of a solution. So what I have here is my MacBook, which is currently logged into Pomoja and a MIDI controller keyboard. I'll just show you very quickly. It is an Akai LPK25. And I've borrowed this from a neighbor, but they are available on eBay, I just checked this morning, and shouldn't cost any more than about $40. It's quite likely that your school music department will actually have one of these. It's very simple. All you do is plug it into the USB port of your Mac, or your PC and fire up GarageBand. I think GarageBand is still free. Um, if not, there are plenty of other sequencer applications. Now, many of you will have seen GarageBand before and probably used some of the pre recorded loops. I'm not happy with you using the pre recorded loops because the chief examiner isn't happy with you using pre-recorded loops and it might affect your score in the final outcome. So I'd like you to get out of that habit as soon as possible. What I'm going to do in GarageBand is to fire up a new music project and I'm going to do that with the screen capture. The movie score is just loading and I have a project which I prepared just for this called Mountains which I've put into the movie track and you can see it's loaded and it's soundtrack as well. Creating a new track and it, I've selected software instrument because it's a MIDI controller and it defaults to grand piano but I'm going to put a drum track in first so we're going to take a look at the details here and I'll select the drum track hopefully. Here we go. and it shows a range of options there. I make sure I select it down in the details as well. It takes a second or two to load. And then my keyboard can be used to create a drum track. So here we go. You should notice in the top left corner uh, where my screen capture is that while it's recording you can see that there are notes being inputted into the MIDI track. I made a few errors at the beginning of the recording. So I'm going to show you how to fix those and to create a drum loop which can be repeated. To eliminate my errors, I move the playhead to the point where they finish. I choose split and it splits the track. I select the part I want to remove and delete it. So I'm going to record a new track and again I use the software instrument and this time I've used a synth bass. Now it doesn't really matter which instrument I use because I can change this afterwards. This is just MIDI input. The next thing is how to create loops. I place my playhead at the point where I want to split the track. I select the part of the track I want to remove and delete it. So I take my cursor to the end of one of the selected tracks and it changes to a circular motif. I then drag that to the right and it repeats the loop until I finish. 
Hopefully this introduction to GarageBand and the MIDI functions of it has piqued your curiosity and that you'll explore more of the limits of what it can do as they can meet your needs as filmmakers. I would say that the same also goes for your video editing software. What you need to be doing is to use your natural sense of curiosity to explore the limits of what it will do in order to meet your needs. Uh, I'll just show you the film which I ran the score for. I'm no musician, but I was able to put something fairly simple together really quite quickly. Some of you may also have noticed from the insert in the top left hand corner that GarageBand is capable of mixing different sound levels. In fact, it can do the mixing for your film, although generally I prefer to use the video editor.